tapping me here. Um, yes, you can. Blue light interaction. I have a few people here. Um, the masses of people online, uh, please. Um, yeah, do interrupt if there's a process too complicated to explain or uh, too small a font or anything of that sort uh, in the talk. Please interrupt. So the agreement was that, um, yeah, not everyone in this seminar knows what a Torrid variety is. And I would spend a little bit of time explaining my view on at least projective um, torrent varieties. I have a warm up exercise here um, for everyone to do. I will give you a minute or so to ponder. This is a little bit getting ahead of myself because we're going to play this game and the in the actual talk, in the, in the main part of the talk. So I have given for you here a polynomial in two variables. Okay. And the question is, what's the order of vanishing along the line <coughs> x to the zero? What's the order of vanishing at the origin? What's the order of vanishing at the origin, if I consider it along the line x equals zero, can you make any sense of that? And there's going to be one more question in a minute. Take a piece of paper if you need. You know, I like interacting. Let's do that. Right here. Thinking I'm going to draw the serious picture. Okay, so what does it mean for a polynomial to vanish along x equals zero? That's a line. I mean, it has an equation, it's a co dimension one thing in the plane that I'm considering. It has one equation. And the question is essentially like, what's the answer? Does anyone talk to me? Maybe in the, in the on, outside audience. <laughs> That's very good. Um, so, how often can I divide this polynomial by this equation by x? Okay, you can divide it twice. Why can I? Because every term is divisible by x, even every term is divisible by x squared. But this term here, for example, is not divisible by x cubed. And that's why two is the answer. Um, how about vanishing at the origin? Four. Why four? Because four is the highest degree that you have in the x cubed y. The lowest degree. That's what I meant at first. Yeah, no. that's what you meant. <laughs> this answer here is four. This is degree seven, five, four, five, and six. That's the lowest degree. Okay. Any answers for this? One. Maybe. Why one? Because it's the lowest degree of a Y that occurs anywhere. It's the lowest degree of a Y that occurs somewhere. But then I would not call it this complicated thing, right? Then I would say, how often does it vanish along y equals zero? Right. Um, so everywhere it doesn't make sense, right? The thing is zero along this thing because this number is positive. So that doesn't make any sense. But what I can do is I can divide the whole thing by x squared. And then I have an honest function along the line x equals zero. And right, then I can restrict to this. So set x equal to zero and then look at the lowest one term. 
all of those advantages. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the answer is three. Okay. Now, what does the picture have to do with it? Well, I just have to draw these exponent vectors here. Okay. So this monomial here has exponent vector two five, and the next one is two three. Etc. And I claim I can read off this information I gave you there from the geometric picture. Okay, so what I will do, what I like to do in all my research, whatever I see polynomial, I want to take the convex hull of the of the um, exponent vectors that occur. So we call them the Newton polynomial vector. Okay, and I can read off these numbers geometrically from this picture. How often can I divide this thing by x? That's just this distance here. That's the two that we see. Um, what's the smallest occurring degree? Total degree. So total degree is also a linear function on this space. And the lowest occurring degree is is or here okay and this is a little bit more complicated question um is so you take the thing you divide as much as you can so you move kind of this baseline here and then you look at the lowest degree that's this three okay so the coefficient we don't care so we just take care we just want to know which monomials occur, which don't. And then these questions are essentially questions about some sort of linear functional or something a little bit more complicated um, on the polygon. Okay, so that's all questions we can. These are all Torah questions, okay, in the sense that we can answer them by just looking at the Newton polygon. Now, What happens if I change the zero to a one? Answers. That's good. <laughs> this is a complicated <laughs> question. So the previous questions were easy questions, and these are now complicated questions. Now you have to, you know, essentially what to do you make a change of coordinates and you replace all the x's by you know um x plus one and the y by y plus one and you expand out and then you have a new new polytope and then you can like <clears throat> but that like now it really depends on the on the coefficients these are non toric questions okay complicated questions toric nice non toric is complicated and these are the kind of games you're going to play in the, in the picture um all right so that's the title of the second part let's spare this um for a second so my first part of the first part is i'm going to tell you about points of foreign rights okay what are the points so my input as always, going to be a lot of polytope in d dimensional space, meaning the convex hull of five dimensional points, all whose coordinates have integer are integers. So, like Newton polytope with polynomials. When the monomial has both coordinates integers, I do allow negative exponents. So, I, you know, that's that's not a problem, but this will be a lot of polytope. That's that's my input, 
and my output is going to be the word rightly x that all fall with the p in the in the index and it's going to be not an uh, abstract variety it's going to be embedded into some projective space okay and the n here is the number of lattice points in the form in that and i'm going to give you by example um this is our favorite lattice polytope. The second part is always going to be dimension two. We're not going to uh, really uh, leave that. Um, so I'm going to end up with uh, an abstract variety, a set of solutions to the system of common equations um, in five variables, so in P4. Okay, now I'm going to tell you take your favorite field. Okay, my third field is, is the rational numbers. And I want to assign a field element to each of these last points in a way that is compatible with addition of lattice points. Okay, so for example, what I can do, if I put a one here and a two here, then going right means doubling. So I would have to put a four here. So I really, I, I still think of these vectors, these lattice points as important vectors, and then adding adding um, lattice points corresponds to multiplying the value. Okay, and then if I maybe put a three here, then this should be a six. Okay, so these are the points of my forward variety. Assignment of field elements to lattice points compatible in a compatible manner. Okay, so my first observation here is of course, this is the same point because I'm working in, in, in projective ambient space. If I multiply all the numbers by the same thing. So if I multiply this everything by two, then I get two, four, eight, six, twelve. That is the same one, really the same, not uh, this is the same one. And although it's still compatible with respect to addition, so one, so these points all satisfy a certain equation, for example. This point plus this point is the same as this point plus this point. So two times twelve better be the same as six times four, and yes, it is. Okay, so I've given you a few equations defining cutting out this um, surface is going to be in this case in P four. So essentially, you're choosing a factor per dimension. Roughly, I'm going to get to that. Okay. I'm going to get to that. Um, so here's another point. So if you, if we are in dimension in dimension two, um, you can take your favorite triangle of lattice points that doesn't contain any other lattice points. So for example, these three here, and um, just assign something to this. So maybe this is one. This is I. Minus i, and then the rest is determined. Right? So this one you have to be, you know, this minus i times this i is one divided by this one. So this has to be one. This one has to be, you know, this one squared divided by this one. So this is minus one. Okay, but these three things here. Um, um, fully determine this point by this compatibility um, um, condition. Um, are there other points that you can think of? Like truly other points.
what I just said that I can choose arbitrary numbers here and and the rest is, is fully determined is not quite true. For example, what I can do is I can, for example, whatever point I have, I can divide by whatever I have here and have a one here. And then choose something here and something here and then compute these. That's true. Provided they can divide by this number. And now we come back to our exercise. All right, geometry is all about what is zero and what is not. That's the only the only distinction. So this could be zero. But can you come up with a point that uh, of my first right which has zero here? Zero everywhere. Okay. Like this. That's that's my last example. Okay. <laughs> Zero, 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 zero. That is not a point of n minus one, and therefore it's not the x. Okay. okay. But what I could do is I could put a, I don't know, a one and a seven here and zero, zero here. And that's compatible, right? This times this should be the same as this times that. And yes, it is. These are points of my variety. Say these are uglier points than the ones we had before. I don't know. We need to take 12, 0, 0. We could go all the way to say 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's also a point of my variety. <laughs> So these are the points of of of, of foreign writing. If you want an actual definition, I didn't really tell you what compatibility meant and so forth. So if you want an actual definition, you could think of really as a symbolic code as being uh, embedded in one dimension higher, and then you look at the at the cone over your polytope like that. Um, so you would define C to be the cone over C times one, and then uh, you want to write it down. You can take a kilo K, and then the set of K value points of X. That is the semi group homomorphisms from the semi group of lattice points. In this cone to the semi group K, the multiplication. Okay, so you have a multiplicative group in our field, that's a group, but you do want the zero also there, and then you have a semi group. And the semi, what I wrote down here, defines for you the semi group homomorphism from the, from, from the last point in your cone. Um, yeah, and I guess here yeah, you have because we're working subjectively, you have to model um, um, K star. Right, so that's that's a that's a now a, a, a full definition. Um, um, What we've uh, seen essentially is so this is not this 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 guy doesn't play with us so we will have at least one vertex with a non-zero coefficient and we can put this one <coughs> equal to one so we can cover um auditory variety let me by four charts. Then I can put a one here. 
and consider this now the, like the functions on X locally around. Uh, let me start with this one here. Okay. So the, here's one point of my polarity. And what this means is I have a chart around this point and the functions on X locally around this point are given by polynomials in this number and that number. Okay, similarly here I have polynomials in these two and yeah, it goes on that. So through the vertices. Um, these are four um, uh, parts that show that this part variety is in the manifold. Yeah. So, so that is specifically for that one. That's not a general thing. Smoothness is is a criterion you can read off from the polygon. Okay. Tell you but it's not it. always with four charts. No, it's the number of vertices. Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. um, right. So that was the chapter point. That's not the chapter four factor. Um, so these toric varieties are called toric varieties because the pores act on them. And for algebra, um, um, we just take um, everything that's non-zero in my projective space and then set it with X. Then I get these beautiful points here. Uh, you know, like nothing is zero. And these points form a group, a point by multiplication. And in fact, this group is a star to the dimension plus one. Okay, we said here we can choose three numbers. The mention of the positive is two. We can choose three numbers and affine lattice basis here, or if you want uh, uh, a basis for the lattice Z, Z cubed in, in this picture, we can choose three non zero numbers arbitrarily and then everything is defined. And then I can put numbers on all of these three. Not just inside the cone, not just inside the polyp, everywhere. And uh, so we get this group, but of course we're working projectively, so we have to divide, divide out by the diagonal shape star. Okay, so this this thing I will call P, and the group is isomorphic to the multiplicative group uh, to the D. And this thing sits as an open dense subset in X, but it also acts on X by point by multiplication. P acts on X. Um, and so I have one example here for you. Um, um, so our point is one, two, four. Six. That's a point in the torus. I, I can act on it on a point that's not in the torus, for example, one, zero, and that's going to be a point in my torus that I do. Okay. One times zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. Three times zero is zero. So we keep the zeros, and the non-zeros we multiply. Six times one. Goes here or times seven. So this torus action keeps the zeros where they are, and where there are no zeros, that is, you can do this at home. That's going to be a phase of your polyfill. And um, well, every point 
you can get this way. You can any two points, if you divide them point wise, you get a total point where you can extend it to a total point. So, um, uh, in orbit on one one corresponding to space. And including the dimension. So, um, have the, the, the big core of itself, that's one orbit. Um, that, that corresponds to the entire polygon. So, this dimension two in this case. This core orbit is just non zero numbers here. That's, uh, that's a one dimensional orbit. And on this point, you can act with whatever core element you want. You will always get the same point back. So that's a big point. Um, um, yes. All right. And one more, um, one more thing that I wanted to mention is if you have a phase, you take the orbit corresponding to that phase and you take its closure, and it's again the chord, right? right? This this orbit that I was looking at here contains uh, this point, the origin of this chart um, in its closure. And so this is again the chord variety, it's the chord variety that you would get if you would start from the polyphobe. Um, all right. So one more section in this. This thing, uh, one more section here. Um, hold managing order. Um, if I have a phase of co dimension one, so one less than the polygon itself, all the polygon passes, um, and this gives rise to one for a variety contained in the other of co dimension one. So, yes, I can define a vanishing. Um, a vanishing order here. Um, so functions on this thing have a certain order of vanishing along this thing. Um, so when I have a lot of points, in C, this gives me a function. On on X, I really can say function in 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 quotes. Okay? Every point is a collection of numbers on these last points. Well, like if I look at this last point, I can just distill this number from the point. That's the function. Um, it's just not a well-defined function. Right, because I can multiply all numbers by two at the same point, my function gives me different values. Um, so it's not really a function, it's, it's really what it's in the section of the line level. But locally, in these charts, it's a function, and I can have a well defined, um, have a well defined order of vanishing. Um, so what is the R of anything along X F of such a section S? So the, the functions are really K linear combinations of lattice functions. Okay. Like this. 
right? This is this is probably B that I'm that I'm talking about. That's a k-linear combination of 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 these things. And now I want to know what the order of vanishing along a facet uh, toric sub variety is. And we already we already tested this, right? This is some sort of distance from that facet. Of the of the new. So I'm just gonna write the two points. Um this is the F and the new polygon. So that's that's saying it's a new polytope is inside of P. Okay, if it's outside of P, this distance could take a negative. Value and then this means that this section is not what we would call a gold section. Um, that this has a pole, I'm sorry, a long x axis. It's going to have uh, these things, these rational functions can have zeros and poles. And this distance function is really, I think, of as a linear function. And yeah, it's true along this green line. But it would be minus one along this line. Right? So if I have a if I had a monomial x to the minus one y cubed, that would have a pole or a one. But this is a um, well defined function. And I, let me just introduce one more uh, notation. Um, the capital gamma of x and p. Um, that's what we call the global section. That is, have no poles. And as I said, this is all, all the sections whose new polytope lies inside of P, in other words, that span. Um, over our ground field of um, of So here we are considering the polytope P and the facets, right? And before when we were practicing, we only have one Newton polytope. So our polytope P is the quadrant or? The polytope that I will draw here later in the talk will be a dilate of this one. I'm going to draw a big dilate of this one, and then this will be a global section of, I think, five times this polytope later on. That's that's for the second part of the talk. Okay. Um, I think we're ready for a five minute break. Anyone who wants to flee can flee. All right. Yeah, I restarted the recording so we can uh, pass to the second part. You're still allowed to interact. <laughs> You're still allowed to interrupt and ask questions. And, and and all that. So to have a full title here of, of that, that was announced. Um use of group of semi groups are often not finally generated, um, but enough to get my Co authors, this is joint work with Claude Altman, Alex Duronia, Karin Schaller, and Dana Weidel. Um, and uh, my plan is well, first of all, to tell me what these new to a group of semi groups are and their associated body bodies. Um, 
the main part will be I will try to explain um, a criteria in a very, very specific situation for uh, foreign surfaces with non foreign flag, slightly non foreign flag. Um, uh, when the resulting semi group is fin finitely generated, and um, then tell you a little bit uh, about the methods, uh, maybe an example. Um, part four is uh, using the form of functions, which are convex. Functions on the nuclear group of body um, that um, uh, have uh, gained interest recently, but um, the kind of constraints I will probably, well, not probably, I will not talk about nuclear group of functions. Well, that's no, 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 in a different. That's why. Come on, that's a different case. That's why I'm here. I did not prepare that. <laughs> and I did not announce that. Um, Yes. Well, that's for the after session, maybe. Okay. And we can talk about it. Okay. Uh, I guess I need to move board for the definition. Newton Ruger theory, in, in some sense, is an attempt to carry over as much as possible of the beauty of foreign writing to a more general sense. Um, um, yeah, let's see. Let's do this here. So the input um, for today is going to be a projected surface. And uh, a drag geologist will never, you know, take a six embedding into some projected space with actual equations defining the thing. They will think of uh, a polarized variety right, X with them together with an ample divider B. Um, um, that's the first input. The second input that we need is a flag of sub variety. And that's in our case rather easy. We take that. They're labeled by their code and engine. So Y0 is the surface X, Y1 is the curve, and Y2 is the point on that curve. And I, I really want, I want X, I want both Y0 and Y1 to be smooth, irreducible, and smooth around or in. At this point, um, right. so if you have attended the previous part of the of the talk, you should think really of the situation for the flag. You take the entire polycode, the entire current variety. As you go by zero, then you take a curve for this, for example, this one, x equals zero, and inside it, you take the origin. And that would be an example of, of, of such a situation. And in this situation, let me give uh, the name um, f is the equation. The curve y one in some neighborhood of my point y two. The output output um, is a way to assigning to a section. 
um, and then this one will be the global section B. So we talked about this previously. That's just a linear combination, a linear combination of lattice points in P. Um, I want to assign to it numbers, order of managing type numbers. Okay, so I'm going to assign a number val one of that and the number val two of that. So in the end, I will get two integers. Um, and how am I going to do this? Well, val one on f, that's just the order of value um, on f along the curve y1. How often can I divide s by s and, and still get um, something without a pole along y1, along the curve? Um, and we do exactly what we did in the beginning of a previous talk. So we're going to take, we're going to take S, we're going to make it into an actual, so, so far S is probably constantly zero along one one. So we divide S by X to the appropriate power. And this power is, is val one of S. Now I have a function that I can, at least in the neighborhood of y2, restrict to y1. Now I have a function on y1 on the curve, and I can take the order of managing in y2. I remember, and this is my new polytope, is this length. I, this new problem is two cranked away from this axis, so it's divisible by x squared. So I'm going to divide it by x squared. Okay. Then I'm going to restrict to y1. I mean, I set x equal to zero. Then all this junk goes away. And I look at the order of managing in zero, in y equal to zero. That means I look at the smallest y term. Okay. And so the way I've stated it now, it's still a very complicated theory. But the 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 idea is always don't look at the actual numbers, look at the body thing. So we're not gonna just look at global sections of D, we're gonna multiply D by an appropriate number L and record this L here. So this is now three numbers again. Okay. And the uh, Newton Lukunga of semi group S, so the full beauty that is S index flag of the divisor D. Um, That's just the set of all not all vectors that can get this way. So L uh, one of S, L uh, two of S. Where S uh, of the gold section of L and D. This is a neutral funk of semi group. And the neutral cone of body, is then you take the cone over S, you close it up, and you intersect with the level set L. Okay, so this is a hyperplane in this three dimensional space. Okay, 
And that means that if you have like for L equals 17,000, you have some section with some order of vanishing here. You just divide this whole thing by 17,000. These two numbers have 17,000, and that's a rational point inside the Newton's number problem. Because for small values of L, you know, intricate things can happen. But if you just Scale this away and, and look at this kind of an asymptotic version of this of this uh, you only get rational points when you look at this at this step and divide everything by L. So you take the disclosure. Um yeah, so this in specific instances, Okunkov has has used this um and then some convex geometry to prove. Some cool inequalities in algebraic geometry and representation theory in particular. And then um, a few groups of authors, Kadi uh, um, Kowalski and, um, and Musa Dalada, kind uh, of generalized this apparently independently almost at the same time. And since then, this, this theory has. Has taken off. So one cool thing about it uh, is that the normalized volume of delta, delta, that would be the same thing as the degree of the divide. And so this is, in, in some sense, uh, people say this is a categorization of the degree. The degree is just the number. Now we have a convex body. That knows a lot more about um, about x and d. Uh, yes, d, d came from a polytop to begin with. That's right. So in the so this is kind of the general set. I just not assumed any toric. So far, no toric ah, whatsoever. Okay. Right? That, that's the whole idea. You try to. Bring kind of things from toric land over to general land. And general land just needs some protective variety together with an apple line bubble. And then suddenly you get out of convex body. You know, from protective toric variety, we know how to get a convex body. So if you start to uh, see from a political. Um... That's my example. That's not. Okay. That's 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 precisely you have an, an abstract, complicated abstract, at least complicated looking abstract definition. Uh, you should give it a okay. Um, and yeah, this is, of course, the unavoidable example. This is X, historic, and the Y's. Also, bar. Okay, so this is y zero, y one. What's the what is the what does the picture look like? Well, for example, L equals five. Go up to here. Okay, so L equals five. This is the polytope of five times D. Okay, so my global sections are linear combinations of these lattice points that I'm seeing here. Okay, and the val one and val two, if this is my the so Newton polytope of my sections, what is it? What's the coordinate of this point? So you look at the you, you minimize this linear functional over your Newton polytope. You look at the left low space, and on the left low space, you look at the lowest point. So this thing here, well, you have an L, and you have here a lot of point in L times P. And then you divide this whole thing by L. You get a rational point in P. Right. So what I've shown you is that 
this thing contains the nuclear group of bonds. But you don't need to take from, from complicated sections like this. Right? You could take this section. One times this and zero times the rest. That's the goal of section. What its valuation point is this point, this vertex, scaled down. You get all the vertices, so this is really equal. This is really a way in in like this is a generalization of the story quality. I, I waved my hand a lot. I didn't write down too much. Um, the story polytope that we all now know and love is. Um, Is a new group of bodies. Okay. So I probably should finish my talk by telling you all the beautiful stuff that you can do with new group of bodies and why they're so important and, and, and relevant. Um, I, if you're really interested in, in that aspect, please talk to my co author Alex. He knows. Everything there is to know about um, about Newton Kumpa's bodies and and what they can and cannot do. Um, so one thing why we should care not just about the asymptotic version, uh, but of about the actual semi group. Is for example, um, if this semi group happens to be as a semi group finally generated, then it, it is clear that the neutral concord body we get is the rational polytope. Um, if in addition, you assume that if you in addition assume that and very um, rational array. Delta intersects F. Better um, so if you if you have a rational polytope as you look at both bodies, and it's already sufficient for the for the vertices of this rational polytope, they give you rays in this one-dimensional higher space. And if each such ray actually comes from a section of some L, we don't care how big the L is. Under this additional assumption, you can go the other way. Right? So if you want to show finite generation, you show these two things. Okay. So that's polytope stuff that's that's easy for. Everyone in the seminar. Um, although the not so hard, if you know uh, Gurta theory, is that if the uh, semi group is uh, is finally generated, uh, 
then you get a flat deformation from your X to a torus horizon that's given by a set of generators of X. The, the one who wrote this is Um And in fact, for many papers on uh, Newton Cooper bodies, if you look at the Feinstein, they do assume, let's assume that the semi group is Feinstein. Um, but um, deciding whether the semi group is Feinstein generated or not is, is, in general, it's very, very complicated. Uh, relates to Nagata conjecture and, 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 and horrible things like that. But we're going to identify a very specific situation where we can decide that. Here's one. This, uh, an amazing theorem. Um, Um, they show that you don't need to know all the words in this in this theorem. They show that so the complexity one T variety means I have a torus action on X, which is not full dimensional, but it can have one dimensional X. So for a torus variety or torus surface, I want a two dimensional torus acting effectively. Um, it doesn't matter to say it's enough if just a K star acts on my surface. If my flag is T invariant, I'm guaranteed that the semi group is fine. And some, there's some really beautiful civil congruence things, effects happening on these Newton Kunko bodies when you change the flag. Um, um, that are not fully explored. So there's there, there's stuff more stuff to do. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the setup. We are interested in in the generation of the semi group. Uh, here's a situation where we are guaranteed finite generation, and we're going to deviate from this situation just by an axiom. In the next part, question online audience question. Oh, how hard is the proof of that theorem? Or what goes into it? Do you know? I mean, off the top of your head, what goes into it? Well, you need to know stuff about. Uh, about complexity one key varieties is uh, what they call bicycle. No, they don't do bicycle tones anymore. They do um, polyhedral dividers. So there's a, there's a whole theory, like there's a theory of chord varieties, and which is full dimensional torus action. And there's then people in particular, like Munhausen and Charles Eichmann. Um, but also Nathan Wilson and Henry Zeus have developed uh, like what can you still say when you have one dimensional lack of the Um And you still get somehow polytopes just now. The quotient by the torus is not the point, but the curve. And rational here just means that this, this child quotient is T1. You don't have a higher genus uh, curve, and on this P1, then you have, you know, a, a divider, which is just a bunch of points with coefficients, which the coefficients are now polytopes, not numbers. Yeah. And using this theory, then you can prove that. I think if you have fully divested the theory, then this is not, not terribly difficult. 
but I'm not I'm not reading the the polling yet. Yeah. Okay. So I can raise the position safely. At least explain the question. All others. So here's the criteria. Again, I'm going to try to work with an example a little bit more complicated than our running example from so far. So, whoops, this is my polytope P, and I'm going to work on. Um, I'm going to work on the torque variety associated with P. So in that sense, it's more special than the than the Ilsen man setup. Um, so here's the normal fan P. If you do not know what a normal fan is, yell now or whatever will do. Anyone yelling? Only, um, only the word normal. When you, this is just the fan of the. Yes, the fan of inner normal networks. Mm. I am a mean person, so I'm thinking <laughs> inner normals. This vector here is normal to this path. Yeah, you have to, if you talk about dark geometry, you have to work with normals. Um, okay, so this is the same thing. So this, this, this is our setup. What, what comes next is I'm going to choose. Um, a vector here. So my picture is converted for my example. Let me call this vector. So that's a linear functional on this space. Um, all right. So now comes a little bit of magic. Um, Um, this vector is orthogonal to a primitive segment here. Okay, so these two pictures are on dual faces, they're in different shapes. These two pictures are on the same shape. Um, okay, so there's a primitive segment here. Um, so that's that's like a new polytope of a binomial equation, right? Like x cubed y squared minus one. Okay. That's a curve. <clears throat> that's a curve in my torus. That's going to be my y one. The closure inside of x y one. Observe this is the torus variety. Right? There's a two dimensional torus map. This y1 here is an orbit <coughs> of a one parameter subgroup of this torus. So there's a, there is a k star acting on x, and this y1 is invariant under this k star. Right? In a sense, um, 
I'm, I'm restricting from the two dimensional code. I'm just looking at one dimensional subcores. And, and this here inside the torus is the torus orbit. And this is closure on orbit. This is um, this is almost the situation of looking at Madden. So the Madden now tells me, well, take one of this, this is a, this is a P1. Um, Possibly with two singularities, but it has two fixed points at the end. And one of these two fixed points as your y2. And you know, I don't do that. Okay, so the only the only difference to this setup of open manage is that I'm going to take the point one more. That's certainly a point that lies on this curve. Um, I mean, you could take any point on the torus and then take the orbit under the sub torus you've chosen. Um, uh, you would get really the the same the same thing. How, how do you choose the flex? I mean, the original example that was toric. If you have a toric flag, this is your neutral super body. Everything is fine to generate it. No questions. Right. So we take a hard writing, we take a different, a slightly different flag. And with everything in the whole setup, we are in the realm of this theorem. The only thing that we're not, where we're leaving this is, is this is the point of the flag. Everything else, the curve, everything is still in the realm of this theorem. So this kind of just to show how little you have to deviate from the standard thing, like to eventually end up with things that can be not finally um, Okay, so for the criterion, let me just write down a definition. Here. We call a vector inside a cone strongly decomposable if you can write it as sum of two interior vectors of the cone. Right, so this V certainly is strongly decomposable, say in this in its cone here, because I can write it as a sum of these two. So you can you can think about it a little bit and say, okay, you look at the convex hull of the interior last points of the cone. If I'm not on the boundary of that, I'm strongly decomposable. At least in dimension two, that works. Um, so the the all right. So that's our setup. Uh, I need one more. Right. Um, I will define under under this notation. I'm going to define cones sigma plus and minus as cones generated by edge directions.
So the longest segment the follow to be inside the peak. Okay. Look at our P. Okay. I want segments that are orthogonal to B, so that are parallel to this guy, to this one. Okay. And they intersect P in a certain length. And I want the longest one. That would be this one. Okay. Now there's n directions adjacent to this longest. This one, and this one, this one. So I get um this could be sigma plus and which is this one color. This one. This one would be the direction of sigma minus down and down. Is it important there to really take the longest segment as a subset of R2 or does lattice longest somehow? No, that doesn't because the direction is fixed. Like the normalization of the of the length is is, is, is is fixed. You're only looking at parallel things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, okay, but it really makes a difference to not to shift it one to the well, not one to the right, lattice two to the right or whatever. Uh, will will would give you the same lattice length, but not the same. No, it would not. So length, right? this the yeah. little bit here it counts. Counts. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, I, yeah. I'm just measuring like this um okay and if i have if i have these definitions then i can at least formulate their s is finitely generated if and only if Plus or minus v um, are not strongly decomposable in sigma plus. Okay, so this. The picture I've drawn here is still in the same space, like these distortions, right? But now I've, I've I've done this so that my that this direction here, where um, which is orthogonal to be, really has sigma plus and sigma minus strictly on on either side. So if I dualize this, then I see that B, I guess I should take the red thing now. B looks in lives in this tone and minus B lives in the dual to this goes like so it's a you in this case it's the union of two normal tones. But it will lie in the interior of both of them. And it can or cannot be strictly decomposable. And um yeah, so this one is. So here we have an example of where the sample group is not finally generated. 
um, thing. I should be wrapping up soon. So um, I maybe leave the method for for the discussion later. Let me just give you at least one example. This is um, an, a, a recent famous example. Um, well, we have a target variety, the one plus one to this polygon. And uh, if you blow up at one general point of this target variety, you get something with uh, non polygonal um, effective components. If you know what that is, uh, that may or may not be exciting for you. Um, uh, it means that this effective cone has infinitely many generators. In particular, the surface you get by blowing up this once, just once, um, will have infinitely many negative curves. So, so what is the shape of this effective cone? Is it still uh... As a bright in some way, what's the third man? Other, but... No one knows. No, this is a you should look at this. Uh, there's a convector of concepts, I should have, I should look it up, but it basically is takes something related to this. The effective cones should be combinatorial, excludable, and totally wrong. But, uh, well, this has been there's, there's been somewhere, I and mean, this was not found on was paper intensive space. I mean, that there's a big computer search which found this example. For example, you can only look at polygons uh, whose uh, normalized volume is a square. So this is I think forty nine. Otherwise, you don't you cannot produce this. <laughs> And then if you look at, um, so if you look at the, the, the global sections and you look at the order of vacuuming in one one, what can you get? Well, the maximal order of vacuuming you can get with such a polynomial is seven. The square root of 49. That's what you need. But you need more. You need that the space of polynomials with vanity order seven is one dimensional. And that's just, you know, they compute, you know, the, 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 the evaluation map from here to there, and uh, they see, yes, okay, there's the values to other seven, and how big is it? Oh, it's one dimensional. So there's no, re we don't know, like, why is it so, but they have machinery to prove under certain uh, conditions. If you blow it up once, you get into, that's what they show. They, they provide infinitely many rays of extreme rays of the of the effective cone. What is in between, we do not know. If this is semi algebraic, for example, I don't think anyone has a proof. Um, but it's an interesting example. And our semi groups that we look at can. Can all be made finally generated if you think the V appropriately. If you take this V, um, um, let me just formulate this here. Whatever, so this is a particular D, but now you can move the facets like independently. You kind of just scale the polygon, but you can move the facets somewhat independently as long as you stay with this normal band. Um, but you cannot hook up a, a cone which contains D or minus D, in which this 
V or minus V would be from the composer from these from these rays. Okay, so in that sense, it's a well behaving. Um, so let me give you an ill behaved example. Um, Right. So if actually this is your P you can choose whatever D you want, you will never be finally generated. Um yeah, and I think I saw here. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, are there any questions in either online or offline parts of the audience? The intuitive reason for the theorem to be true. I'm glad you asked. Um, how much time do I have? <laughs> so, that we look at the semi group, and okay, as we defined it, we look at the order of vanishing along this point. And in fact, what we do is we have uh, this curve, which is a P1 essentially. So, we have to be honest, we have a map from P1 to X, whose image is Y1. And um, so dually, you have a projection of polytopes. And the projection goes into this direction. And the order of banding you can achieve is just the number of monomials you see is governed by the number of monomials you see in the, in the projection. That's the order of banding you can actually get. Asymptotically, this number of monomials, that's just the length of the projection. So to actually achieve this, the length, you need some L, some thing to get all the lattice points you can possibly get. Okay. And like if you look at this projection here, you can make this as big as as you want. Right? If this is kind of the zero, you will never get the one. You make what you can do with L is you can scale this polytope bigger and bigger and bigger, but you will keep this little corner here. And so in the projection, you'll get this monomial, which count accounts for the length of the projection. So you scale as much as you want, you will never get the, the next monomial. And that's that translates into this. If you dualize the statement, that's that's this. Um, yeah, that's that's the proof of the criteria. But it's yeah, so it is combinatorial, right? I mean, what the algebraic geometer would do is they would look at the order of vanishing here. So let's blow up this point and let's look at the as the things we get, and that's that's a disaster, right? In this example, it's a complete disaster here. We have no control whatsoever about what came up. So we try to stay as much as we could in toric land, even though we have this ugly non toric point. Do you need to stay in dimension two? What do you need to stay in dimension two? Uh, I think a lot of what we do can be transferred to higher dimensions. Um, but I think the, 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 the main message of, of, of this is that even in dimension two, we go wrong. Right? I mean, to get it, to get an act like an, a, a really nice to say criterion like this one, we just look at, at two fixed cones, not just Kind of all the cones you can make from the you know, you look at two fixed cones coming from the longest segment that is the 
it's a lot clearer than it will be, than it will be in higher dimensions. But um, yeah, I think this can be done in higher dimensions. Yeah. Okay, uh, if there are no other questions, I. Come on, guys. Wasn't even wasn't every, anyone there even? Yes, Maybe? there were there are like fifteen people. And they're not talking. They're shy. They're shy. Um yes, yeah, so I will stop the recording.